Well, good morning, and welcome to IMF Parish Church. Um, before we begin, uh, due to the current situation with COVID-19, as I'm sure you're all very familiar with, I need to make the following announcements. Please remember it's important to remain seated where you are, to maintain physical distancing. Uh, due to the restrictions, you're asked not to sing during the hymns, I'm afraid, but please do follow the words that will appear on the screen. Toilets are available, they're just where they always are, through that door. Uh, follow the arrows and please remember to keep your face coverings on inside the building at all times um, and finally please make sure to follow all the notices with regards to hand washing and sanitizing and await directions from our stewards before exiting in the end basically don't all rush out at once uh, very straightforward I'm sure Now that's all over, can I wish you a good morning and in the name of Jesus Christ, welcome to Eyemouth Parish Church. Uh, whether you're here in person or watching online, though I'm afraid uh, the online probably doesn't appear to be working, <laughs> technical difficulties, aren't you all glad you're here? Um, it is lovely to actually physically see you all this morning and a warm welcome to you, especially anyone here uh, joining us for the first time uh, in person. It's great to have you with us. Uh, maybe take a moment, turn around to those uh, around you, give them a wave, uh, say good morning. Uh, you get a good view of all the folk who have sneaked in after you came in. Uh, also, like uh, before we begin, just to thank our stewards as always, uh, Donald and Pete for keeping us right uh, and coming in, uh, and Dixie for, for looking after the technology as always, and Margaret uh, providing the music this morning, and of course Martin for the service as well. We begin this morning with a call to worship based on a reading from the Bible, from the book of Psalms, uh, <laughs> chapter 98. But before that, let's just take a moment of silence as we prepare ourselves to worship the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Read in Psalm 98, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Amen. Now continue our worship this morning. As we listen to the hymn, Sing to God, New Songs of Worship.
Now, as a church, we've been participating in the Bible 2020 project. Uh, it's a project to inspire the global community to read the Bible out loud across the world every day. Uh, and you can join in, download the app, uh, and get the reading each day uh, and read out loud. But on a Sunday, we've been, as a congregation, taking that opportunity. And this morning is a bit of a mammoth passage, I'm afraid, from Job chapter 15. So let's uh, say this together. Then Eliphaz the Temanite replied, Would a wise person answer with empty notions or fill their belly with the hot east wind? Would they argue with useless words, with speeches that have no value, that you even to undermine piety and hinder devotion to God? Your sin prompts your mouth. You adopt the tongue of the crafty. Your own mouth condemns you, not mine. Your own lips testify against you. Are you the first man ever born? Were you brought forth before the hills? Do you listen in on, in on God's counsel? Do you have a monopoly on wisdom? What do you know that we do not know? What insight do you have that we do not have? The gray-haired and the aged are on our side. Men even older than your father. Are God's consolations not enough for you? Words spoken gently to you? Why has your heart carried you away? And why do your eyes flash so that you vent your rage against God and pour out such words from your mouth? Amen. If you're wanting a bit of context of that, <laughs> you'll need to read the book of Job. <laughs> but um, one of his friends who had not been very helpful to him now we're going to have our prayer, and I'm going to invite Martin up to lead us in our prayer. Let us give our hearts and minds in prayer. Almighty God, who in your fatherly love walked beside us in each new day. Help us this morning to take the time out of the busyness of life and spending it resting in your presence, worshipping your goodness and mercy, not just for an hour in a church building, but wherever we are and for this whole day. May we bring honour to your name through our lives and through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father God, you know our sins, our mistakes, and each of our faults are not hidden from you. We ask that you take us away from all self-righteousness and hypocr hypocrisy and give to us humble and truthful hearts to confess our many sins to you. We don't pretend we have any merit of our own but must always rely on your everlasting mercy revealed in Jesus. Set us in the light of the sacrifice he made on the cross, that we may see that our sins are what brought him to that place. May you wash all the way all our sins, forgiven us and removing our guilt, so that we may be at peace with you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, light a beloved Father, you know our every need. Free us from anxiety about tomorrow. Give us contentment and peace with all that you have provided and empower us to seek your kingdom first. Pour out your Holy Spirit, we pray, as we gather these prayers in the words your Son taught us, as we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is a kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever. Amen. Thank you, Martin. We're now hopefully going to be able to see the drama which sets the scene for our reading this morning. Here we have Cornelius. He was an officer in the Italian group of the Roman army. Cornelius was a religious man. And he and other people who lived in his house worshipped the true God. He gave much of his money to the poor and prayed to God often. One afternoon, about three o'clock, Cornelius saw a vision very clearly. Quickly, vision. You don't need your wings. Quick, quick. You just didn't have the quick. Wings. Or are you off? Come on. And said, Cornelius. What is it, sir? Look afraid. What is it, sir? The angel said, God has heard your prayers. He's seen that you give to the poor and that you pray. And he would like you to send some of your men to Joppa to go and find a man called Simon. Simon is also called Peter. And he's staying with another man called Simon, who is a leather maker. His house is beside the sea. So the angel then left and Cornelius called two of his servants and his soldiers and told them what happened and sent them off to Joppa. Meanwhile, in Joppa, Peter was going up to the roof to pray in his house. He was also very hungry. It was about noon. But while the food was being prepared, he had a vision. Suddenly, a big sheet was lowered down to earth with its four corners, and in it, all kinds of animals, reptiles and birds, were there. And a voice said to Peter, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, No, I've never eaten food that is unholy or unclean. I've never eaten any food that's unholy or unclean. But God, the voice said, God has made these things clean. Don't call them unholy. This happened three times. And then the sheep was taken back up to heaven. Peter was wondering what that vision meant. Meanwhile, the men had reached Joppa and Peter heard a voice saying, there's men downstairs waiting. They are looking for you. So get up and go downstairs. Go with them, but don't ask any questions. I have sent them to you. So Peter went down to the men and he said, I am the man that you're looking for. Why have you come here? You don't need to be there. He's not there to say. I am the man that you're looking for. And they said, a holy angel spoke to Cornelius, an army officer, and he's a good man. He worships God. All the Jewish people respect him. The angel told Cornelius to come, for us to come and ask you to come to his house. So, Peter then said to the men, stay the night because it's a long journey and we'll go in the morning. So, off they went the next day. So, Peter then arrived at Cornelius' house. Cornelius! 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 Hello? Who is it? <laughs> you uh, knocked on the door and she doesn't like that. So, Peter arrived and Cornelius fell at his feet and worshipped him. I still see when Peter entered. But Peter said, Stand up. I too am only a man. Stand up. I too am only a man. Human being. And Peter went on telling Cornelius as they went inside. 
you people understand that it is against the Jewish law for a Jew to associate with or visit anyone who is not a Jew. But God has shown me that I should not call any person unholy or unclean. This is why I didn't argue when I was asked to come here. Now please, tell me why you sent for me. Four days ago I was praying in my house about this same time, three o'clock in the afternoon. Suddenly a man in dazzling clothes was standing in front of me. He told me, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your gifts have been noticed by God. I've sent messengers to sub to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He's staying at the home of si Simon, a leather maker who lives near the sea. So I sent for you at once and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here waiting for God to hear the message the Lord has given you. There was an awful lot of people gathered for Peter to talk to. So Peter then stood and told them, we don't need to get out there because you'll be off camera. Right, just, so what are you going to tell them? Um. He said that God accepts anyone who worships him. God accepts anyone who worships him. No one is more important than anyone else. No one is more important than anyone else. You know that God has sent his message to the people of Israel. You know that the God has sent his message to the people of Israel. The message of good news. The message of good news. I saw Jesus healing many people. I saw Jesus healing many people. Not just the Jewish people. Not just the Jewish people. And this is what we're putting forward. And this is what we're putting forward. We can preach to all people. We can preach to all people. And this is good news for everyone. And this is good news for uh, for everyone. And God will forgive those sins. And God will forgive those sins. And you can receive the Holy Spirit. And you can receive the Holy Spirit. There we go. <laughs> right. Ah. Apologies for the technical pitch and the fact that the sound was pretty much inaudible. Uh, but we're going to try these things. So that was the setting the scene really for our reading uh, which Dixie is now going to read to us from the end of that chapter in Acts, Acts chapter 10. Yes, I apologise too for the for the technical hitch. They say don't work with animals and children, but I think I should add computers to that. Definitely. So our reading today is from Book of Acts, and it's from it's in chapter ten, continuing the story of Peter, and reading from verse thirty-four. Then Peter began to speak, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that, that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem, they killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, 
that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Amen. Thank you, Dixie. Um, Just going to quickly run through the notices as well. Um, As always, the service is available on our phone line. If for folk who aren't on the internet or can't come in person, you can listen to the service online. It's usually available from the Sunday afternoon onwards all week. Uh, You can also listen to last week's sermon as well, if you would like, on our phone line. We do also produce DVDs of the service, the online service, and indeed the service in the building too. Uh, If you know someone who would like a copy of the DVD, let me know, and we can sort that out for you and send it to them. We have a newsletter out, uh, and if you haven't got a copy, it came out at Easter time, let us know. We can get you an electronic copy or even a paper copy if you would like. Uh, This week also marks the start of Christian Aid Week, starts tomorrow. And we are raising money uh, for that. And there is on the order of service, which you can download from the internet, is a link to our our Christian Aid uh, envelope, our e-envelope. But there are, I believe, paper envelopes around. Dishbell has them. They are at the back. Um, If you would like to donate in kind of real life terms, rather than doing it all online. Uh, Christian Aid are focusing on the climate crisis This year, the climate crisis hurts us all, but people living in poverty fight the worst of it every day. From droughts to flooding, climate change robs people of control over their lives. Extreme weather means people are struggling to survive without a reliable source of water, and that's what we're raising money for. Your gift could help a community build an earth dam, so when the rains do come, they will have the water they need to live. A reliable source of water will help families withstand long drought or relentless rainstorms. So please do donate generously to uh, Christian Aid Week this week. Also, just before this week, it was announced the Church of Scotland have moved to divest all of their investments in oil and gas, uh, which is a great uh, call for people to remind ourselves that actually we all are able to do something about this situation. Um, And it's great the General Assembly have been calling for the, the church, the investors trust of the church to do this for several years. And finally, they have moved to do it. So it, pressure does work, and small actions can make big differences. Uh, this Thursday is also Ascension Day, for those who keep track of the, the church's calendar. But it also marks the start of the Thy Kingdom Come initiative, where we spend time praying between Ascension Day and Pentecost, which is two weeks today, um, praying for folk to come to know Jesus. Quite simply. The challenge is over these 10 days to pick five people who we're going to pray daily for to come to know Jesus. Um, it's a global prayer movement, but alongside this, we are planning on having another 24 hour prayer vigil uh, as we did last year. And it will run from Friday the 21st at 6 pm to Saturday the 22nd at 6 pm. Uh, and basically, the idea is you sign up to take an hour of that prayer time and you spend that hour in prayer. Uh, We'll provide resources and anything you might need for that time, but basically you just need to email myself to to book that hour slot. And if I'm honest, if you want one of the really awkward times, like three o'clock in the morning, you need to get in there early because they're the ones that go first. Um, The normal ones are kind of fairly easy to fill. So uh, if you're wanting an hour, please let me know as soon as possible. 
And that's uh, basically starting a week on Friday, uh, yes, uh, the 21st, from 6 p.m. through to 6 p.m. the next day. <clears throat> In the coming week, we've also got our weekly prayer gathering on Tuesday morning. And as always, we'd encourage you at half past nine just to take 10, 15 minutes to pray uh, for the church and the community. And you can join in with all the folk who are praying at that time, as well as the folk who are on Zoom. Then on Wednesday evening, we have a congregational board meeting at half past six. And then Thursday, outdoor vestry session is outside the church, usually somewhere on the grass, half ten to eleven o'clock on Thursday morning. If the weather's okay, if it's pouring with rain, I won't be there, basically. Uh, and then in the evening at seven o'clock, we live stream our Thursday reflection. And then next Sunday, we'll be back with a 9.45 live stream and then half 11 in the building. Uh, and to pre-warn you, we're planning to do communion on Pentecost Sunday um, at, in person. Uh, so to take part in that, you're welcome to bring your own piece of bread and own piece of wine if you want. But we will provide uh, bits of bread and wine in little packages that will be COVID safe. Um, and so you don't need to bring anything with you. But we are going to celebrate communion on that Sunday, the 23rd. Um, so please do join us for that. Uh, the IMF Bladder is up and running. Uh, the times have changed. They're open 9 to 11 every morning from Tuesday to Friday. Uh, so do come in, see what it's all about, uh, and come check out if there's anything there that you need that can be saved from landfill. A uh, couple of other things. Uh, Jim Evans, I'm sure you all know, it's his birthday today. So if you, if you have a chance, do wish him a happy birthday. Um, and also I'd like to add my congratulations to, to Donald Margaret. We were celebrating, was it yesterday, your 50th wedding anniversary? Congratulations, guys. Um, it's great to be able to celebrate these things with everyone, um, but obviously we need to know about them to be able to celebrate. So please do, if you're sitting there thinking, well, they never mentioned my birthday, well, you need to let us know <laughs> for that to happen. Anyway, right, I'm going to move on. I've got a couple of questions for you to think about this morning before I speak. Um, and the first one is if you were to think of a type of person who you would imagine is beyond God's grace, what type of person are they? Who would you imagine them to be? And how would you go about describing your relationship with God to someone else? What are the kind of terms and thoughts about your relationship with God? that you would say uh, if you were to describe it to someone else. But I'm going to give you a wee moment to think about that before I start. Now, will you join me in a prayer? Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for the words of Scripture that we have heard read this morning. And we ask that you would send your Holy Spirit to transform those words of Scripture into your holy living word. And Lord, may your Holy Spirit come and open our ears to hear your word echoed in our worship. In the words of our prayers, in the words of our hymns, and in my words too. Lord, may your Holy Spirit come and enter our hearts, preparing it to receive your message for us this morning, your holy living word entering into our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as we've moved away from Easter, we've been spending a wee bit of time thinking about the people who have lived in that perspective of Easter. Those who have met the risen Christ. Those who have had their lives transformed in these post-Easter days. And we thought about what it means to be Easter people. And today we heard the story of Cornelius. And the rest of Acts 10, which we saw, we saw dramatized, maybe didn't hear it particularly well, sets the scene for our reading. Cornelius initially has a vision of an angel who comes to him to tell him to go and send for a man named Peter who's living or staying in Joppa with a man named Simon. And so Cornelius does that. And as the messengers are on their way to Joppa, Peter himself 
has a vision. He has this vision of all this unclean food that as a Jewish person he would he wouldn't touch and he wouldn't eat. And it's brought down to him. And God says to him, kill, eat. And each time Peter says, no, 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 I've, I've never eaten anything unclean or impure. And then God says to him, do not call anything impure that God has made clean. And then he says to Peter, look, there's some men coming for you. I want you to go with them. No questions asked. And so, of course, Peter does go when the messengers arrive. He goes with them to Cornelius' house. He preaches the word of God to them, and they are filled with the Holy Spirit, as we heard in our reading. And he says that they are to be baptized. Now, from our perspective, this might seem that there's quite a lot of setup for Peter to go and preach to Cornelius and his family and his friends. Seems like a lot of faffing about with visions and angels and things. Yet that's possibly because we don't really grasp the importance of what's going on here. Maybe that's because we don't really grasp the kind of barriers that Peter is coming up against and breaking down. Because Cornelius is a Gentile. He is a Roman soldier. He is simply a non-Jew, which is really what Gentile means. Somebody who is not of the Jewish nation. And for Jewish people, if you were Gentile, well, then you were, you were beyond the pale. You were somebody they would not associate with. They wouldn't talk to them. They certainly wouldn't go and meet with them or go into their houses. They were not one of God's chosen people and therefore not worthy of really any recognition at all. And yet God calls Peter to go and meet with this Gentile in his own house. And he reminds Peter through this vision of the, the unclean food That it is who God chooses that makes someone clean. The voice spoke to Peter a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. Indeed, when Peter goes and he stays a few days with Cornelius and his family, it is so controversial that when he returns to Jerusalem, he's hauled over the coals by the other believers for the simple fact that he must have eaten with them. We hear about this in chapter 11, straight after this reading. When Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, you went into the house of an uncircumcised man and ate with them. Peter was doing something that a Jewish person should never have done. Yet, for Peter, God's vision on the, on the rooftop, and then the outcome of, of meeting with Cornelius and family, and God's clear action as the Holy Spirit comes, is all he needs to stay with them and to eat with them. To, in some senses, break pretty much every rule that Peter had grown up with. Every rule about eating that had been laid out in the Old Testament. He suddenly goes, you know what? God says I need to be here. God says I need to preach to these people. God needs, sees these people and has filled them with the Holy Spirit. Thanks to this situation, in some senses, we, who are Gentiles, for the vast majority of us, we are not Jewish, we were not born into the Jewish nation, we as Gentiles are accepted in as followers of Christ without having to comply to all the, the Old Testament rules, without having to comply to all the Old Testament laws. Because God made it very clear 
that was not what needed to happen. Yet this isn't just about our, our own access into the faith, to being part of God's family. It's a reminder to us as well, a challenge maybe, that God chooses who God chooses. This choice is not a matter of human agency. We do not decide who God chooses. But God is at work. God is the one who chooses. This was true for the disciples themselves. Jesus himself said back in John chapter 15, when he's speaking to them, he says, you did not choose me, I chose you. And there's a challenge there for us as followers of Christ. We cannot sit in a place of judgment over those who have responded to God. We might think somebody, you know, maybe not suitable for this church. But that's not how God thinks. We might think, well, I wouldn't really want to associate with that particular person. But that's not how God thinks. If God calls us to them, if God has called them, if they are seeking God, then then who are we to question that? Who are we to say, it's not really for you, I don't think. In these verses that we've read, we hear the, the proof of, of Peter's vision. Do not call anything impure that God has made clear, clean. It's very clear that God has made these, these unclean Gentiles clean. He's, he's poured out the Holy Spirit upon them. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have, says Peter. Just like it happened at Pentecost. And so he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. The Holy Spirit is at work in those Gentiles. In those people who Peter should never have associated with. And the Holy Spirit generates a a real passion for worship. For their, their praising God when the Holy Spirit comes on them. And it makes me wonder, do we have that sense of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives? Are we filled with that that sense of joy and praise over our acceptance into God's family? In the same place where Jesus tells the disciples in John's Gospel that they didn't choose him. He chose them. He also reminds them of our relationship to God. Verse 15, in chapter 15 of John's Gospel, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. We are not servants. We are not slaves but we are friends of God. We are someone that Jesus loves. Indeed, that simple identity of of being someone who Jesus loves was so important to John, who wrote that gospel, that that's how he describes himself. He doesn't talk about himself as the author of the gospel. He doesn't say John the disciple. He just says, the one whom Jesus loved. And yet, if we feel that that we don't maybe deserve that love, maybe we feel we've, we've traveled too far away from God, or we've ignored God too much in our lives to truly believe that, that, that God might love us. Well, well, let's go back to the very start of this sermon and point number one. God chooses who he loves. 
It's not up to us to think that God hasn't chosen us. God has chosen us. You are someone who is loved by Jesus. That can be your identity. No one is beyond the pale, and that includes me or you. We are all worthy of God's love because God says so. Not because of what we've done, not because of who we are, but because God says so. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. So in this moment where Peter meets with Cornelius, and the Holy Spirit comes, we see the barriers between God's chosen people and those who are not the Jews and the Gentiles utterly destroyed, set aside. God's chosen are those that God has chosen. Not necessarily those who were born into the Jewish nation. And we must not drop back into the same trap, pre-judging God's call. Those whom God has chosen will be clear through their response to God, through the praise and the joy of knowing that they are loved by God, that they are God's friends, that God has called them friends. Let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for your risen presence in our lives. That your love is not restricted to the, the kind of holy Joes of this world, but to every single person that you have chosen. And that sometimes these people that you have chosen are not the folk we would imagine them to be. So Lord, we ask you to help us to be ready to share with those that you have called. And help us to, to truly grasp what it means to be called friend by you. What it means for us to be loved by you. And so Lord, may your Holy Spirit work through us. Fill us with that joy and praise of knowing that we are part of your family. Knowing that we are loved by you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we're going to have our prayers for others. And there is a response in this when I say, God, in your mercy, if you could respond, hear our prayer. Let's pray. God of abundant life. We see your goodness all around us, and we thank you for every part of it, from the plants and animals which play their part in complex ecosystems, to the dry deserts and the stormy seas which test the limits of life. We pray that in this time of climate crisis and ecological emergency, you may help us to rediscover your love of creation and to reflect that in our own lives. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who speaks through unexpected people, we thank you for contemporary prophets who are challenging us to act on climate change. For indigenous people and their invaluable knowledge of the land and sea where they live. For scientists dedicating their careers to warning us about changes to the planet. And for young people striking for their future. We pray that you will help those in power to hear their prophetic voices. Help them to see beyond short-term political priorities and business plans. Give them wisdom and courage when they face difficult decisions. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of second chances, we recognize the damage we have done to the earth and the injustice we see in society every day, 
fueled by worship of profit and possessions. We pray for the coming of a better world with justice, kindness and humility at its heart. We ask that you guide us to be co-creators of this new world. Give us confidence to follow the prophetic voices, to stand against injustice to people and to the planet, so that together, in your strength, we stop this climate crisis. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all powers, we thank you for the many freedoms that we take for granted. That simply as residents of this country, we can participate in the choosing of our elected officials. As a new week begins and a new group of MSPs must work together, help them to continue to concentrate on the current crisis while planning for a greener recovery. And in, and in all of this, work together for the betterment of all people in this country. Lord, remind them that it is not just those who voted for them that they represent, but all people in this place. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great God, who makes the sun to rise and opens the heavens, hear the cry of the people who sow in hope for rain, but reap only despair. Hear the cry of the people seeking shelter from the storm, their hopes and homes submerged. Hear the cry of the people when creation is hitting back with rage and resistance. Give us hope. Grant us salvation. Give us a new relationship with creation, with reverence to tend this gift from you. And say once again of the earth and all you created, it is good. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we bring to mind those we know who are struggling through loss or grief, through illness or sickness, through hard times and struggles. Lord God, we ask that you would draw close to them through your Holy Spirit, that your healing that you would grant your healing to them in Jesus' name. And that they would know the comfort and peace, the relief and release of that presence in their lives. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May God bless us with wonder at creation's glory. May God bless us with fury at creation's spoiling. May God bless us with courage at this critical hour. And may the blessing of God rest upon us and on all creation this day and for the future to come. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to close our service as we listen to the word, uh, the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
So this morning we've thought about how we can sometimes prejudge those called by God and that their joy and praise will reveal them to be friends of God. But also we are reminded not just that God loves all people, but that God loves us. And so now we say together, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our door. Wait until you're called to leave, and uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.